But eight months later, FedEx did find something. During routine maintenance on a FedEx airplane, they found a massive area that had debonded from the inside of an A300 rudder. It was about three square feet of previously undetected damage, according to this March 2006 National Transportation Safety Board report. In addition, hydraulic fluid had leaked into the composite material, which could cause further damage. Canada's Transportation Safety Office is still investigating the air transit case. In light of the FedEx incident, the NTSB urged more thorough inspections of certain Airbus rudders. The NTSB also wrote that there may have been dangerously close similarities between the air transit incident and the American Airlines crash in 2001. The NTSB recently wrote the FAA saying, hey, um, the airworthiness directive you have issued with respect to that rudder loss, you didn't go far enough. They've specified you have to do repetitive inspection, and in fact, they're using non-destructive inspection now. But these repetitive inspections on the troubled composite parts are outside tap tests, not more sophisticated tests like ultrasound. Wissing and others want to see more done. Our concern is that they've tried to establish the visual and tap testing as the basic foundation for composite inspections we're not catching the damage that's occurring. If that were good enough, we'd catch it early and consistently. We're not. But that may be changing as airplanes are made with more composites. When Boeing delivers the first 787 Dreamliner to Japan's all-Nippon Airways in May 2008, that airline will have invested heavily in ultrasonic equipment and a core mechanics trained by Boeing to care for the aircraft. So it seems 21st century inspection methods are on the way to some airlines. And for Wissing, who in 2002 stopped flying the troubled Airbus airplane because he felt they were not properly inspected, he may one day fly the 787 Dreamliner. That is good news. Pilots are analytical. We put safety as our top priority. We use 21st century inspection methods with these new materials. Then we have complete confidence in the product and we have complete confidence that we can get in the airplane with our passengers and go fly because that's what we do. Two weeks ago Boeing announced they were postponing the first flight because of what they said were production delays. They acknowledged that these delays can cause significant compression of the program for testing and safety certification. But Boeing still plans to deliver the first 787 on time eight months from now.